Thank you for joining us here at Ethical Reading, making Reading a better place to live and to work. My name is Kim Searle, Emotional Mastery, and I will be your speaker today. So is working from home killing your staff work-life balance? That's the question we're posing today. By the end of this webinar, we're hoping to have given you some insights into the negative impacts of working from home. In particular, the reason we're doing this is that um, at the beginning of the year, Ethical Reading launched an ethical recruitment charter just at the beginning of COVID. As you can imagine, uh, everybody was so focused on lockdown that it didn't really get um, taken up in the way we were hoping. This is the first of a number of presentations that will lead up to a soft launch in 2021, where we will be discussing compassionate leadership. And the work-life balance has been the biggest challenge this year for that compassionate leadership. So at the end of this webinar, you'll have plenty of opportunities to ask some questions. So we all know that this year has been one of the most challenging and difficult for everyone. And we're on the cusp of something. We don't know exactly what that is because so much has changed that we didn't even imagine this time last year. Who knew that people would abruptly shift from working in their normal workplace to working from home as the new norm? To understanding that everything would shut down and we would be isolated to our homes? Who could have foreseen that many would be losing their jobs over the course of this year with so much uncertainty and so many scars, some of which we see and some of which we don't. And many of those are around the physical, mental and in emotional ways that people are coping with this lockdown. I wonder how might we be working and living post lockdown, post coronavirus? We're just exploring the more um, unsavory, unnegative parts of working from home. So some research done as part of Ethical Reddy's, Reading's work here is um, about what, what is being recorded. And interestingly, the, if the stats are varying depending on where you're going. But before I go into them, and as you read them, I just want to share a couple of stories with you. The first one is with a gentleman who runs his own business. And he, when I spoke to him, he loved lockdown. It had meant for him that he had more time with his family. Previously, being self-employed, he was working long hours in the office or out seeing clients. And he just wasn't there for, you know, meal times and bedtimes. He wasn't there to support his wife. He loved lockdown because it opened up a whole different way of working for him, using technology like Zoom to contact people who previously would not have considered it. It was a real bonus for him and he loved it. However, there are some people who have really struggled with it. Take this gentleman I'm just about to describe to you. He's in his late 20s, early 30s, and he loves working from the office. He likes the buzz of working with people, feeling like he's part of something, you know, being able to tap someone on the shoulder when he gets stuck. Working from home was a nightmare for him. He had a young family at home. He didn't have much space to work and he was struggling in so many different ways, being distracted by the, the young children because back in first lockdown, they were all at school struggling with the idea that he couldn't just reach out to people in the same way that he could before. Everybody had been around him. It was so much easier. Getting natural breaks during the day, going for a coffee, having to walk to the coffee machine, or going out at lunchtime to get lunch. Then he was stuck at home and everything was a very short space of um, working. And he was struggling, struggling with concentration, struggling with getting everything set up, even down to his desk space. And let's not forget those parents who then had children to educate as well. 
they took over the role of teacher as well, really struggling. So these stats are just are just numbers, aren't they? They don't really tell the stories that are going on behind this. And the first lockdown, we were all into that whole, you know, community, let's do this together. We were all clapping the NHS and we were all supporting all those who were struggling um, because of they didn't have food or wanting um, deliveries made, medicine, all that sort of thing. The second time round, it's different, isn't it? There's a different feel to it. So the stats are very important to guide us as to what's going on, but it's the stories underneath that's really important. It's how individuals, the employees are coping, and more importantly, how businesses are gearing up to support them in some way. So please do look at these stats because they are important. We know that health is being affected we may not really understand it until you look at stats like this. And what I would say is that I saw some stats very early on in June that sort of suggested people were feeling much brighter about things back then. So there's a very large proportion of people who are beginning to experience challenges. They're experiencing um, more turning to drinking and food for comfort things that they probably wouldn't have done before, doing less exercise because their motivation is through the floor. These are the things that are concerning, not just employee employers, but all of us. I wanted to include this quote from Peter Cheese because I think this sort of sets the scene is that businesses have got to be thinking long-term, not just now, but they need to get a grip of now first because the whole workplace scenario is about to change. I referred to being on the cusp of something. More flexible working is one way that businesses can start to help facilitate their employees of the future. Those who want to work from home more being allowed to, but equally flexible hours for those who have to be in a workplace or out on the road. They're going to be needing to think differently so important as we go into 2021. But now I want to talk to you about some of the benefits I mentioned earlier. I don't want to go too much into this uh, information because, you know, to be fair, this isn't the purpose of this presentation, but I think it's important to note it though. It's important to understand that there are, have been some reported benefits and from a large uh, number of people. How many of us knew how to use Zoom prior to lockdown and how much has that just taken off? Because it's a really good way that people have been able to connect and communicate and will continue to do so. And if it's not Zoom, it's Teams or FaceTime or Facebook videos. There's so many different ways. So many of us have had a bit of a learning curve, a steep one, as we go through to this. According to a YouGov report in, back in June of a thousand employers, they were saying 61% had reported enjoying a better work-life balance and that 43% were saying that they had enhanced collaboration with their colleagues and 38% improved focus. But isn't it interesting? What's behind that? I've already explained some stories to you. If they're enjoying a better balance, it was short term. Most people thought everything would be fine come June, July, and it's not been. Is that something that people can continue to enjoy? That's what this webinar is covering. Are they really enjoying an enhanced collaboration? Because there would have been some effort in making sure that they kept in touch with people. I've already talked about how it was very much um, a spirit of community and support and helping people out. Is that still the same this time round? And will that be the same next year? And that improved focus, was that down to the fact that the people were working in isolation at home and not suffering the same sort of interruptions they get in the office? That's great, but long term? There's some impacts there. So I think some of the positivity stuff is great. But in order for that to remain positive, 
we have to be looking more and more at what exactly is happening behind the numbers that we're seeing. So this is the main part of this presentation, the reported drawbacks of working from home. Most of the stats are right now. And whilst people are beginning to think about the long-term effects of working from home, many businesses, a large percentage of businesses are thinking actually, because it's worked so well, it's a cost that they can, they can let go of having so many premises. I know of at least three in the location uh, that we are in that says that they are thinking seriously about closing some of their buildings and allowing people to work from home. Multiply that over the country, and then you've got some more consequences of people then not necessarily having a choice about working from home, or if they do, having to phase going in with others, particularly if lockdown and COVID continues around us. The long-term consequences that we will be seeing around mental health and emotional health, how are people going to be managing that? We can only speculate right now. We have no idea. So the best thing to do is to focus on the now. What exactly can we do now? What are the problems that people are genuinely reporting? And it's interesting that when this happened, um, everybody found somewhere to work from, from home, didn't they? Some of the people would have been, you know, at the dining room table, or maybe they had a shed that um, they could use, that they quickly converted, or, or maybe they were just sat on the sofa I've even seen people working from their bedrooms. And we've all seen the stories of people who are working in amongst the family because there is no spare room to be in. They haven't got a, a room that's just available for them to work from. The children who would then run in or the dogs and the cats who might just go past in the background or start barking because the postman's come. I think it's really interesting that one of the benefits that have come from that is that obviously we're seeing people as people, but the drawback is it's very disrupting for the person who's working and trying to concentrate, attempting to be professional and holding it together. There's a pressure on them to do that, isn't there? So having workspace at home right now can be a challenge. If I can refer back to uh, the young guy with the young family who um, was struggling with working from home, he ended up buying himself a desk. He was able to bring home a chair so that he could work from home. And he had headsets for his telephone and his laptop, which all helped assist him in some way to manage his working from home. But what about those who are right in the thick of the family? Because let's face it, if you're available, the family are going to say, can you just, it'll only take five minutes. But every interruption takes the, the employee away from what they're doing. And it's stressful because they've got something to do. They've got a contract with their employer to do certain things. And it can be quite hard. So kids, pets and partners are still around and even though they're working from home they might not really appreciate that working from home doesn't mean being able to do all the other little bits and pieces that need to be done and family the family impact of working from home they're suddenly now having to cater for any uh, you know the work being in their home and they might find that they have to you know leave the room maybe keep the children quiet or the dogs out into the garden. They've got to do certain behaviours to help facilitate that employee to work from home. Maybe just keeping the background clear, you know, making sure that the laundry isn't hanging up in the dining area or the kitchen where this employee is working, making sure that it looks neat and tidy. There are lots more pressures on the family as a whole. And as you can imagine, that can begin to impact the employee and their family in a big way, because it's not just short term, 
It's not something that we can say is only going to be for a couple of months. It turns out it could be for much longer. How is that going to work? The other thing that's worth mentioning here around the environment is that employers have a duty of care to their employees, such that the desks are supposed to be at a certain height and that laptops have to be um, so that they are not having to strain their necks up or down, depending, that they um, have the appropriate equipment to work with, that they are able to um, reach out and get additional support for the way that they're sitting on chairs, etc. How's that going to work in the new world order, I wonder? Because already I know people who are in the pain management, um, physiotherapy, chiropractory, uh, osteopathy, who are beginning to see signs of people who are struggling with back problems or neck problems, causing headaches and other, uh, other ailments, physical ailments, because their working space isn't set up properly for working. The health and safety side has suddenly become a bolt-on to the way that they're working from home. And people's working space is important. We all like to have our stuff around us. When you look at that, how is that being managed to? What exactly is going on? Because people who like to have you know, space to work, what are they doing with that stuff at the end of the day? Are they packing it up or is it staying out all the time? Disciplines that the individual employee might need to be thinking about for themselves but might need a little bit of guidance and support as to the best way to do that. Because some, some people working from home now are not used to that independent way of working. They're used to having desk space to store things, filing cabinets maybe. We're going more virtual. And going more virtual makes people who like the physical paper to write and to keep an eye on. It makes it harder for them to be able to coordinate and construct what's going on for them. And it's interesting that this disorganisation can affect the way that they're working. It can start to perhaps make them think that they can't, that they're not good enough because they can't adapt in the speed that some people do. And we're not just talking an age thing here. There are younger people who are struggling with the whole way of working from home. One of the biggest things that is being reported is this sense of isolation, loneliness. Some people are feeling neglected or they're fearful that if they're not online all day at their PC, available completely for the whole seven and a half, 10 hours, whatever they're working, that there might be consequences. So I want to talk about that because it's really difficult for people who are already less than sure about their position in the business, not because, you know, they're about to be, um, you know, made redundant or that their jobs are at risk, but because of their own belief in their own value and what they do. People who are finding that they love being around people, they feel connected to people, are struggling with the idea of being on their own at home, away from their work family, the work family that brings something different to their world, something that allows them to feel part of something bigger than themselves. Suddenly that's not there. It's really hard to do that when you're used to being with people. And for some people, this is vital. Humans are naturally social beings. We like to be within people. If you go back through eons, we've always been with people. We like to be with those people that are our family who support us and lift us up when we're feeling low. Suddenly that's not so available 
where we are right now in lockdown and potentially may not be as we move forward quite as much as these people need. So one of the challenges that people will be facing, employers and managers and even the employees themselves, is how best to manage that so that they can feel more inclusive in the work that's going on, even if it's virtual. And certainly going forward, how businesses can think about bringing them back in in some way because we're all about bonding, communicating, problem solving in groups. So it's really, really challenging. So one of the things that also comes with mental health and emotional health is this idea of making sure that people are, um, are working more appropriately Another little story, if I may share, is I know a few um, people who went from working in an office to working from home. And all of a sudden, they were sat at their PC almost all day, not quite glued to it, perhaps breaking for the lunch break and maybe the odd coffee, but literally not moving at all. Almost as though the manager had an even bigger eye on them watching them because they thought or felt that even if they walked away from their laptop for a quick break, that they would be held in some way less than working. And unfortunately, that is the old paradigm of working. The new paradigm will be very different because psychology and many studies have shown that actually regular breaks from the screen is good for you and your productivity but also for your um, well-being in terms of um, your, your eyesight and your brain power. It can only take so much. So it's really important that these people are being given permission to step away from the laptop occasionally. It's called presenteeism. It's a new word where people are just constantly there and above and beyond even you're finding that some people are actually still at their pc long beyond the working hours they're trying to show their value that they are working that they are doing the best that they can and it will be a warning sign you'll see a bit later on the duration of how they work are they then at their laptop all day and then finding that you're they're still there later on in the evening some people feel like because they're working from home they're not really working and so put more effort into doing more which is interesting when you think about the um, stats i was talking about earlier where businesses were seeing increased productivity was that because people are working harder because they feel like they're working from home and therefore they're not working? One question just to think about, I think. And the biggest thing here is work-life boundaries. The, the purpose of all this, as you can see, they're beginning to blur on so many different levels. They're blurring at a physical level. They're blurring at a mental level. They're definitely blurring at an emotional level where the employee could be pulled from one to another and it's important to understand that these people are doing the best they can in difficult circumstances. And sometimes they need a bit of help and support, something that they can learn and be OK with. So they get some instructions and guidance from those they are working for. And one area I, 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 I don't want to go into too much, but I just want to bring it in is that some of our employees will be vulnerable. And if they're vulnerable, they'll become more vulnerable potentially by working from home. And those people really need to understand they are not alone, that all the resources that the business will have in place needs to be shouted out more and more, giving them options, letting them know it's there as and when you can. So it's really 
really such a wide sweeping set of impacts that goes on. And remember, it's not just your existing colleagues who will struggle. I want you to remember your new recruits too, just as a final note on this area, because your new recruits only learn the culture by being immersed in it. How do they learn culture when they're not immersed in it? It's going to take them longer. It still can happen, but it's going to take longer. So there's lots of things going on there, and I'm sure it's not a, a conclusive list either. I'm sure there are others as well. And I wonder what other ones there might be that we've not captured. It would be interesting to discuss that. So what could best practice look like? How could you support, support your employees and yourself to work through this idea of working from home? And remember, we're working with what we know now. In three months, four months, a year, it could look differently, but you have to start somewhere. It's easier to start um, with a, a, a framework to work with. Here you will see just some examples and I'm not proposing to read them out, but I do want to say to you, first of all, is watch for what's going on with your employees. Now is the time to be more observant, to listen more, to pay attention to what is not said as much as what is said. Because it will be the small changes and they will start to grow that will let you know that there's something going on the introvert who becomes more introverted, the extrovert who becomes more extroverted, the person who's willing to help doing more. Just watch for those small changes in behaviour that might just indicate your employee is not coping. And I think if I had to say anything else, self, please put yourself first too as well. You're an employee as a manager. Make sure you're taking your breaks. Make sure that you're switching off and creating those boundaries between your work life, even if it means you're sharing the same space. Close the laptop, put it out of sight into a bag. Take self-care and do that for yourself, because guess what? The more you do that, the more you give permission to your employees to do the same. Setting the example of the best way to work from home. So as I come to the end of this particular part of the meeting, this presentation, I've talked about the different ways that people are coping in this environment and that we need a more flexible approach between the employee and the organisation. And we are learning as we go. So if you get it wrong, it's OK. You've made an effort and it's learning. It's asking the questions. What do you need? recognizing that not everybody enjoys working from home or indeed can work from home. So a flexible way of working in the future is going to be important to make sure that we're meeting employees' needs more and more. And certainly at the moment, some of the benefits that people are seeing may not be sustainable. We need to understand the long-term impact in mental health, emotional health, and most of all physical health of people working from home. 